let's see here. You should take the, oh, and there we are. We are live. Welcome, ladies. It's Amy from Fit and Fierce, and this is our expert talk series. And I just have to tell you, I love interviewing all these, whoops, I should turn off my phone. Give me one second. There we go. Click. <laughs> and um, I do love interviewing these expert talks because it's such great information for all of us. And I want to share my next guest here, and it's Lindsay Keefe. And I met her through our, we just called her uh, the powerhouse uh, networking queen, Bonnie Chan, who I also interviewed last week uh, on mindset coaching. So, and this is her good friend, Lindsay Keith, and she is a yoga therapist, right? Mm -hmm. I had no idea that there was such a thing as a yoga therapist until Bonnie introduced me to Lindsay and I had gone to see her a couple of times for some you know, back at back issues, I think, or shoulder issues. And here's Lindsay Keith. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. <laughs> so do you want to tell me a little bit about yoga, uh, being a yoga therapist or the difference between a yoga or what is a yoga therapist? Let's start there because okay. when I first heard that, I was like, what is that? My brain was all fired up and I couldn't wait to meet you and find out what yoga therapy was. Yeah. So yoga therapy it's a lot to unpack, but it's very simple at the same time. So people hear the word yoga and they think yoga teacher. Um, it's a slightly different set of skills, so I can go into a little bit of the difference after. Um, but as a yoga therapist, I'm essentially a movement therapist. So if you get kind of hung up on the idea of yoga, you can just kind of set that aside a little bit. Um, but essentially, I work with people one-on-one -on -one who are experiencing you know, pain, persistent pain, or a lot of stress. So when I meet with someone, we go through, um, you know, we chat a little bit beforehand to see if we're a good match and if yoga therapy is right for them. Um, but really what I do is we go through an in-depth assessment and intake where I learn about, you know, the physical issues and concerns and, you know, what other desires do you have in your life? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your goals? So I really want to get to know um, what has and hasn't worked for you in the past, your strengths and the outcomes that you want. And then I take the time to really listen to your story. Um, there's so much great stuff that comes out when we just have a conversation that maybe doesn't get to be said when you work with um, your doctor or some other healthcare practitioners. Um, and I've also been trained to have a really keen eye for movement. Um, I can see like the nuances of movement, how we compensate or make up for limitations that are existing in our bodies. Um, so we typically start with movement and movement isn't always um, what happens depending on the person and their needs. Um, so I assess and evaluate as we go along. And so I, I'm watching and we're chatting, I'm getting feedback from the client about what they're experiencing um, and helping them to you know, grow their awareness around how their body moves and what they're experiencing and whether that's supportive or not supportive. Um, and so growing awareness around their patterns, whether it's movement patterns or like things that are showing up in their life um, is really, really key to um, progress and, and healing the issue. Um, and what it really comes down to is, you know, every person is, you know, really unique in their expression of their movements, um, in their beliefs, their life experiences, their lifestyles. Um, so, you know, really getting to know the person in the context of their whole life is really, really important because we can't treat every person the same way. Mm -hmm. I could see, you know, 10 people who are experiencing back pain, um, but I wouldn't provide, you know, a template or a protocol to resolving back pain because each person will experience it in a completely different way and have a different way of being able to move and um, work, with their, work with their issue. Um, so throughout the session, we explore some movement, we might explore some breathing, some meditation, whatever is appropriate for them. And then they come away with a written out home program so they can continue to progress and build on the gains that they've experienced within the session. Right. I love it. And, and you're right. It is. And it's a really good opportunity to learn about your body and how, it, how, it's, how it's moving. That's what I realized. And you're right. You do have a good eye because I'd be like the slightest little move and Lindsay would be like, uh, no, this way or that way. Right. And you're, and you're thinking like, okay, what does she mean? And, and trying to make these little adjustments. And I do find that it's a different way of, of, of treating some potential chronic issues that you may have, because if you have seen other modalities or other therapists like massage or chiro and whatever, I find that although they're, they are good and they do fix the problem, it doesn't, 
it doesn't, it doesn't get to the root of the problem. Yeah. So I'm really, yeah, we're really about, you know, resolving the underlying issues that are creating the problem to begin with. So we don't apply a band-aid while it might be a little bit of, you know, working through some coping strategies to manage the pain at first. Mm -hmm. Eventually we were working towards how can we resolve these issues so you don't have to experience the pain in the first place. And there's a process that we go through to get there. And then oftentimes people kind of start to see possibility through new eyes and they're like, Oh, I didn't realize this was possible for me. Now there's something else available. Like, and I get to help them with that. So maybe it's, you know, another goal that we can break down and work towards that has nothing to do with pain management anymore because this new kind of new exciting possibility has developed. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because I find that when I go see the other practitioners, although I do find it helpful, they're not, you're not being told what's actually happening. You're not learning anything. You're just being adjusted and massaged or whatever. And you don't really understand the problem other than the fact that you know it. Or when I go see a yoga therapist like yourself, when I see, when I saw you those few times that I did, I noticed it's like you're learning about your body and how it's moving and what and 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 understanding your uh, your patterns and learning how to change them, right? Because I realize that my left my uh, my if I want to my left shoulder is, is different than my right shoulder and and how is it different? I'm anteriorly rotated, my serratus is weak, and da 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 da. And you were trying to make those uh, make them. I think I overanalyzed. That's what happened. <laughs> Yeah, you're really, really in your head and you're like, okay, what do I need to engage? How do I need to move this? And when our body moves, when it's moving well, <laughs> the muscles will engage just to do the movement. So it's, it's just, okay, this is the movement and we're just going to move in a range that the body can do it without having to overthink it. Yeah. I, so, that. I was like, wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's right. I was totally overthinking being, being the trainer that I am. I was like, okay, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean? With what muscle is she trying to get me engaged? Yeah, so I really, we try to rely on just feeling and not thinking our way through feeling. So there's a, there's a lot of discernment and sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating, um, but it's really not about, you know, making the client wrong or feeling like the body's broken or not working. Like our bodies are perfect just the way they are. And then we can refine and we can learn more and we can become aware of more. Right. And as we start to feel more empowered and understanding like this is how my body is doing today and, and working with that. Right. Yes. Now tell me um, for women over 40, what do women over 40 come to you for typically? So there's a, there's so many things. So a lot of people come to see me because they have like persistent or chronic pain. Um, but two of the main things that I would say, um, would be pelvic health. So um, women who have concerns about incontinence, um, prolapse, pelvic pain, like those things can really like limit our quality of life. Um, and they're common, right? Like a lot of people experience those issues, um, but it doesn't mean that they're normal. And as we bring our awareness and our attention to some of the structures in and around the pelvic floor, um, we can start to unravel um, some of the things that are, you know, holding us back. And so we can resolve those issues, you know, fairly, fairly quickly. Um, it just requires a little bit of like, consistency and a little bit of practice and, and willingness to, you know, feel. Right. Right. And, and so pelvic and what, what's another, what would be not like a number two? Yes. Yeah, so the number two would probably be low back and hip pain. And that's probably paired um, with sh- neck and shoulder pain. So it's either neck and shoulder pain or hip and back pain, or sometimes it's both. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, I've been through both. Um, sometimes at the same time, sometimes not at the same time. <laughs> um, but usually one, one or the other. Right. And yeah. so that can be gr- another thing that's, you know, great limiting to our quality of life we find that we can't exercise or be as active as we were or in a different way Um, recovery might feel like it takes a lot longer Um, and our hip and backs are so so key to you know longevity and you know having good energy and feeling well and aging well so um, see a lot of people for for those issues yes that's my key thing is aging well and being being active, like, you know, being active for me is my entire life, right? So if I can't, and I, and I noticed that it's, t- I'm, I, tr- I turned 50 last year and I realized that I'm, and I'm, I'm still learning about my body. 
that's what I realized, right? It's like at 50, I'm still trying to figure out the little, little things that I'm having, having issues with. It's like, why is this happening, right? And just trying to understand uh, why my shoulder or I'm getting, you know, everything that happens to me is on the left side, never on the right side, right? That's a big one for me. And then having uh, neck and shoulder pain for sure. And, I'm, and, I, and I feel like I'm getting, like I'm, I'm realizing I'm having like weak neck muscles. I think it's from all the whiplashes that I've had over the years. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, and trying to figure out like what it is that I need to do, right? And um, I, think, uh, I think I might need to come back and see you there, Lindsay. <laughs> well, the great thing is I'm doing online sessions now. So thanks to Zoom, I can you know, see you and we can do much of the same practice. We obviously don't have the, the hands-on part, but I'm, I'm pretty good at describing <laughs> what, what needs to be done, so. Right, and I totally understand that because I've been teaching classes online with a bunch of ladies and um i was a little bit nervous at first because i was like well what if i can't see them but you know if the person has the, you know their their uh, laptop or their phone in such a way that you can see their entire body i can i can actually correct them quite easily from a distance so yeah. i'm back there and the, my my laptop is over here i can actually see exactly what's going on so i i i, I believe that you can make adjustments <laughs> over zoom <laughs> but i did i did enjoy coming to come into your studio on queen street here um just because it was a beautiful studio with lots of wood paneling and beautiful light coming in and all the toys that you had in there yes oh it was such a beautiful space at living waters and yeah there's tons of um props and different things that I use to help, you know, people experience their bodies in a different way right. um, sometimes simply by having a novel experience um, it can change how we perceive ourselves and our place in the world. So that can be um, really fun. Exciting not to say that we can't do that while we're at home. Um, right. Yeah, there's something really special about like being able to be together and, and to yeah. share those experiences. Yeah, I agree. So in terms of like the pelvic health and, you know, low back, can you give us one, you know, simple exercise that we can all do, you know, without having to see the person, um, you know, because we're in a, we're on a, you know, this is a, an expert talk series from my membership group. And could you provide, you know, maybe one simple exercise that can help, you know, for us to feel better if you happen to have any pelvic floor or maybe some low back issues? Sure. So let's talk about the pelvic floor one first. Okay. Um, and this is kind of typically, I guess, maybe where I might start with someone just to kind of explore and kind of figure, start to figure out what's going on down there. Because mm-hmm. we often don't think about our pelvic floor. It's we might know that there's an issue, something going on, but we have no idea. We don't really feel into that area. Mm-hmm. So my suggestion would to become um, come into a seated position. So maybe sitting on a chair or um, bringing a pillow um, on the chair. So you can feel a little bit of pressure between your pelvic floor and whatever you're sitting on. If you have like yoga bolsters, you could straddle a bolster. And then, you know, getting really quiet. Mm-hmm. So starting to maybe notice your breath. And that takes, you can take a couple of minutes just starting to feel the breath come in and then starting to bring your attention down to your pelvic floor. Mm-hmm. And some people might be able to sense a gentle downward pressure mm-hmm. as you inhale. Yes. Kind of a release of that pressure as you exhale. And so if the pelvic floor is responsive, if it's able to contract and release, mm-hmm. you might be able to, to sense into that. And it might take a little bit of practice um, and if you can't feel it, that's totally okay too. And so in those situations, I would say visualize the breath moving in and out of the pelvic floor as if you were breathing mm. through your pelvic floor. Mm. And sometimes bringing your hands down even just to feel or maybe sitting on a heating pad can mm-hmm. bring more sensation into that area. And then I would say stick with it. Like out of every day, spend a couple minutes and just see what you notice. And typically what I find after the third or fourth day, people start to say, women start to say, oh, I'm starting to notice something now. There's a different awareness, something shifting and changing. Mm -hmm. And so that would be kind of a jumping off point. Just start to feel into the area and see what you notice. Mm. Interesting. I've never gone through this process before. And, And you're right. It's like you actually do feel pressure down there that I've never, ever realized. (laughs) <laughs> and what we said yeah when you breathe in you feel the pressure and when you breathe out the pressure releases like oh, oh yeah you're right it does because it, like, you, you don't think about that area 
Yeah, our pelvic diaphragm operates much like uh, the diaphragm in our rib cage, mm -hmm. and that changes our intra-abdominal pressure through our core. So in that way, our pelvic floor is very intimately linked to our core stability and our core strength. Mm -hmm. So having a well-functioning pelvic floor can make us more stable and stronger. Mm -hmm. And that's also linked to hip and low back function or hip and low back pain because we want to have a stable pelvis, leg bones that move well in our hip sockets and a great connection between our pelvis and our rib cage. So um, yeah, starting with the pelvic floor could be a starting place. Um, it's not always a place that I go with people depending on you know their life experiences and what they need. Um, right. But just yeah, explore that and see what you notice. Yeah, because I teach Pilates and I don't typically work the pelvic floor. Um, yeah, the inner core, that's what they called it in Pilates, would be like your pelvic floor, your multifidus. And well, I do work the transverse and I don't typically work the diaphragm. I mean, we do some breathing exercise, but I don't really mention the, uh, the, the, the exercising or engaging the diaphragm and saying diaphragm, only because, you know, I feel like when I teach classes is people want to work out right? They don't want to lie there and just feel their pelvic floor. Not to say that there's anything wrong with that, but I do remember one time someone says, hey, can, can we do the pelvic floor? And I'm like, oh yeah, of course we can. And then we did the multifidus and the pelvic floor. And um, I, I do need to incorporate that more in my Pilates class as, as to be more of a well-rounded class versus just like, you know, making it more of a workout, right? Yeah, and there's depending on who your clients are and who you're working with and, and what they want and what you feel comfortable teaching. Like a lot of people just don't feel comfortable talking about that part of our anatomy because there's there can be like shame or trauma, um, different things wrapped up um, within that area. So right. we can we, we approach it gently. <laughs> yeah, and then even when I teach and when I describe how to pull up on that pelvic floor, you know, like sometimes it's hard for me to describe that feeling, right? Without feel, sounding, you know, without sounding, you know, somewhat vulgar, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like trying to be gentle about how, like, how do I describe that feeling, right? Yeah, and what a cue that you give might work for me, but it might not work for someone else. I've talked to, you know, pelvic floor physiotherapists where they literally have like hundreds of different cues to mm -hmm. create the same or bring awareness to the same feeling or sensation, but different things work for different people. Right. And I think too, the pelvic floor, I mean, cause I, I never gave birth. I never had children, but definitely women that have had children typically have more issues down there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And what about the low back? Would you recommend the same kind of thing or what would you recommend? So I, I certainly don't think it would hurt. Um, but yeah, the low back situation is really curious because just because there's pain in the low back doesn't mean that's where the problem is. So it's really one of those situations where I would need to see the person and see how they're moving. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it could be something with the leg bones moving in the pelvis. It could be a relationship between the pelvis and the ribs, or maybe something's happening with the shoulders um, that's making up for lack of mobility further down. So it could be something below, it could be something above, or it could be a combination. Right. So we would explore um, a few different things. Um, but maybe like what I could suggest for your folks, mm -hmm. um, I'm operating on the assumption that everyone, I'm just gonna go on the screen for a second, everyone would have maybe like a yoga strap or a resistance band um, or something like that. And so what I would suggest, and I'm gonna stand up here for a second. Uh, I'm gonna tip my screen so everyone can see. I'm gonna give you a little demo here. Okay. Um, take the strap and oop, I was a little bit, my legs aren't that small. <laughs> Moving it around your mid thighs. Yeah. And keeping your legs about hip distance apart. So you can feel the strap on the outside of your legs. Yeah. And pressing the legs out into the strap. Yeah. And then, and then just standing and holding that. So that can bring more stability through this whole area. And it helps to strengthen the outside of your legs and your bum. Right. So it's kind you of like, kind of like a lot. Right, so it's kind of like the glute meads, right? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Right, yeah. So we all do have bands in some form or another, so whether it be a yoga strap or a resistance band, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so from my perspective, when you press your legs out into the strap, it changes how your femur articulates in the hip socket. Yeah. So we're changing up 
uh, movement relationships here. Mm -hmm. And it also changes how our feet connect with the floor. Oh. So if you're someone like me who has a tendency to pronate, so into the inside edges of the feet, yeah. when you press the thighs into the strap, it changes your experience further down. So now you're more evenly um, mm. rounded in your feet. Right, you very interesting. Yeah, so that's kind of just a fun little thing that you can explore and see what it does for you. Right, and it's, you know, I do love talking to other, you know, therapists or trainers like yourself, because I look at it from, you know, when I saw you do that, I'm thinking, okay, glute meets, right? But I never think about the bottom of the chain with your feet and you're like, okay, it might feel different down here. So I love that. It's a yeah, different, different perspective. perspective. Yeah, <laughs> bringing awareness to the body in a different way. Yeah. And then noticing like, okay, I've done, I did that a couple times for a minute or two. And then notice what the outcome is. So you take the strap off and that's okay. What do I notice now? Mm -hmm. Do my legs feel lighter? Do I feel more grounded? Has something changed maybe further up? Has my breath changed? Mm -hmm. Right? So we're not, you know, going after the low back or we're not necessarily going after the pelvic floor, but we can do different movements or stimuli. Mm -hmm. And then we see what the outcome is and whether that's helpful or not helpful. Right. Right. I yeah. love that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and so Lindsay here lives in, she actually doesn't live too far from me. Uh, we're in Leslieville and she works out of a studio called Living Waters, which is basically at Queen Street East and Pape, right? Just around Pape area. Yeah. It's upstairs in a beautiful building. And she does some group classes in the evenings. And uh, she also has some other events going on. Like I think you said tonight you have a um, a restorative yoga class all over it's all online so it's streamed and you have a sound bath with it so can you tell yes. us a little bit about tonight's event that you're hosting yeah so tonight's event is called restorative yoga and sound bath and it's with one of my friends Nicole Manis who is a certified sound practitioner mm -hmm. um, and I will be leading a restorative class and instead of um, speaking while you're in the pose, Nicole is going to be playing her sound, um, her crystal bowls and creating a really beautiful soundscape. And she has a little bit of singing as well. So we're combining both of our skills to create, you know, a really relaxing, really nourishing, really supportive um, environment. So you can practice at home. Um, you can do it in bed if you want. Uh, you can have your camera on or off. It doesn't matter. So if you don't want to be seen, that's totally awesome too. And we have registration available on my website, which is lindsaykeefyoga.ca. Um, registration closes at 7.30. Um, or you can find the Eventbrite link um, via my Facebook page, which is Lindsay Keith Yoga, um, And that closes at 8.15. And, and are you running this weekly or monthly? Because I have seen you do this before in the past, just so we can kind of give the ladies a, an idea. Yeah, so Nicole and I have done um, monthly sound baths with a yoga class that are two hours um, at the studio. And this is our first time doing it online. So tonight's class is a 75 minute class and it's on a sliding scale. Um, so you choose how much you would like to um, contribute. Um, and we'll likely do it again in the future because I think we're going to be isolated for a little bit longer yet. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a really, really lovely offering. It's a really lovely experience. So um, yeah, it we'll probably is. try to do it a little bit more on a regular basis. It just took a while to figure out with the technology and, and things like that. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. So ladies, so if you've never tried a sound bath, give it a try. I personally enjoy it. I remember the first time I was at a sound bath and I'm not, I, oh, I did a Reiki. Was it a, yeah, it was a Reiki training mm -hmm. that I did and she brought a sound bowl and we're all lying down in meditation and she started playing with her, her, her bowl. And then I was just like, what the F was that? <laughs> I friggin' fell in love right away. Um, and it's very soothing, very relaxing. And then the combination of the restorative yoga, where if you're, if you're not familiar with it, you're basically in a pose for like minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. anywhere from like three minutes to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, yeah. yeah very relaxing so and 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 so um i will i will um type out all your contact and your facebook page and your links and whatnot so if anybody wants to sign up for Lindsay's event for her sound and restorative yoga uh, maybe not today because i won't be posting it for probably a few days um, but maybe the next one that they can jump on and yeah that would be amazing yeah i think i'm gonna try and come tonight and i love the fact that can you imagine like two hours like you just lie there <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, tonight's, tonight's class will be 75 minutes. Um, and we'll, yeah, because it's the first one, if, if we need to do it longer next time, we can. Right. Um, but in the meantime, um, if you want to um, check out one of my classes, I incorporate a lot of the principles of yoga therapy into my group classes, so they're a much slower pace. Um, and we can kind of communicate um, because there's small class sizes, we can communicate during the class. Um, you can sign up for those through my website as well and use the coupon code LKY10 um, to do your first class for $10. Ooh, love it. Oh, okay, hang on, let me write this down. I got, remember these pens? Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. And while you're at my website, um, there's also a little box to sign up for my newsletter. Um, I'm trying to put them out weekly right now. And so there's a whole bunch of um, free resources um, from my YouTube videos to um, content about how you can, you know, take care of yourself at home and, and things like that. Oh, so if it's of interest, sign up for the newsletter, check out a class, or just send me a message if you have any questions or you want to learn a little bit more about yoga therapy. I'm, I can talk about it all day. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay. I really appreciate your time. And ladies, be sure to check out Lindsay Keefe on her Facebook page. I will, I will include all the links and all the promo codes and what have you down below. And I'll see you guys in the next Expert Talk series. Bye for now. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Amy. <laughs>